Geek Citadel. Welcome to Bullet Points, where I list what I liked and disliked about a game, so you can take my list, compile it with others, and see if you want to rent, buy, or watch the game on YouTube. I want to warn anyone that has plans on seeing Game of Thrones to avoid this game at all costs. It spoils a few major scenes that were revealed in the show. The Foresters have been loyal bannermen to the Starks for years. However, things have changed now that the head of the family has been slain during a betrayal of the Starks. The Forrester family has now been targeted by the Warden of the North, Bruce Bolton, who sends his son Ramsay Snow to obtain fealty from the new Lord. Something so simple turns into a big deal when the Squire returns to the Foresters with a message from the slain Lord. The late Lord Forrester was no friend to me or my house. My only regret is I wasn't there to drive the dagger into his heart myself. For the first time in a Telltale game, we get to play as multiple characters. In typical Game of Thrones fashion, the tale weaves between three people in the lives of the Forester's house. Garrett, the squire to the former lord of the Forester house. Ethan, the second son of the house Forester and the new lord. And Mira, the eldest daughter of the Foresters and the handmaiden to Marjorie Tyrell. Each of these characters have their own reasons for protecting house Forester. A squire that wants to protect his lord, a son that wishes to live up to the legacy of his father, and a daughter trapped in a foreign place, forced to trust a nest full of vipers. Much like Game of Thrones, you never know what to expect from new people you encounter. However, when you encounter characters you've read about or watched on a show, you'll try to use your knowledge to sway their favor or stay their hand. Without a doubt, the adventure game genre is the best avenue for Game of Thrones. Drama and reaction is a mainstay of the books and the show. We all know that combat goes down in Game of Thrones, but the best kills are those that happen when least expected. Game of Thrones weighs heavy on dialogue and characters making choices that may or may not lead to their death. For example, think of the many choices that Robb Stark made as king, and you'll see what the story is trying to achieve. It puts us in a position where we feel like we made the right choice, and suddenly, even the smallest choice could come back and destroy us. Unlike games like The Walking Dead or The Wolf Among Us, we're not exactly stuck with a character who can make bad choices and reach the end of the game unscathed. For the first four episodes, I never feared for Lee or Clementine losing their lives or precious body parts. That is not the case with Game of Thrones. You are faced with choices over a long period of time that could cause a trickle-down effect. You may have saved one character with your actions, but the next character could suffer for that mistake. It's the hard life you'd expect out of the series, and Telltale has done a great job at bringing us into that world. Your Grace. The girl knows her courtesies. Impressive. The interactive storytelling is always the best part of the Telltale game. The art, on the other hand, is hit and miss. The Wolf Among Us looked to be pushing a new art direction for the company. The characters in this title managed to provide us with gratifying likenesses of Peter Dinklage, Ian Rian, and Natalie Dorner. It even perfectly captures Cersei's asshole expressions. Ah, <sighs> look at that. You love to hate it. It's the scenery that lacks polish and looks completely out of place with the world they are trying to convey. The backdrops feature a weird blur during dialogue cutscenes. The blur can be spotted at the edge of the actors' faces. The blur also tries to hide the badly textured environments with an oil painting style that completely fails to do so. Much like the TV shows and the books, I don't want to talk too much about this game. It doesn't deserve to be spoiled in the least. A Telltale game has not impacted me this way since the first Walking Dead. I'm a big fan of the books and the show, but I wasn't particularly hyped about this game. Now, I'm itching for the second episode, and will try to play the game multiple times for different endings. Even though the art style isn't that great and the animations are a bit sloppy, this title is a must for fans of the series. For more Geek Citadel plays and reviews, check us out on YouTube, Dailymotion, and GeekCitadel.com. Also, for the PC lovers, join our group on Steam Curator. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.